to welcome you all to our press conference. Uh, thank you so much for responding to our call on such a short notice. I want to introduce you to uh, my colleagues on my left, is Mr. Cesar Namande, who is the Legal Council of Paragon, and my colleague, Mr. Uh, Damaniela. So, uh, what we'll do is uh, I, will, I will read the statement on behalf of Paragon, and uh, Mr. Namanje will do some clarification, will do some clarifications on the legal aspect of what, what we are discussing. And uh, and I'm sure you will have a lot of questions in terms of operations moving forward and the current situation. And my colleague Jasmine will uh, answer those questions. So I would suggest that uh, maybe what we need to do, let, let us finish the statement, the statements and then give Mr. Namanje an opportunity to speak and then we can do the QA after that. Thank you. So this is this is a statement uh, by Paragon on behalf of all our colleagues at Paragon Navigation Services and our companies company. By way of uh, background, on 29 June 2022, the High Court of Namibia, Per Justice Sibaya, ordered the eviction of Menzies Aviation from Osea Kutaka International Airport in order to enable Paragon to commence, to commence with its work in terms of tender award made by the Namibia Airports Company. Menzies then, not pleased with a high court judgment, per Justice Ibea, appealed to the Supreme Court of Namibia against that court. The Supreme Court delivered its judgment on Menzies' appeal on 9 June 2023, confirming the eviction of Menzies from Rossia Kutako Airport as the contractor providing ground handling services to the airlines. After Menzies was given notice to vacate Rossia Kutako International Airport, on 9 May 2023, by the Namibia Airports Company, after it lost its Supreme Court appeal, it approached the High Court on an urgent basis on the evening of 12 June 2023, asking the High Court to stay its eviction from the airport and implementation of the High Court order evicting it from the airport. The High Court on 15 June 2023 temporarily state the implementation of the eviction order pending the court deciding on whether or not the notice given for two messages by the Namibia Airports Company after the Supreme Court order was, was reasonable or not. The court also had to decide whether or not the eviction order must be stayed until finalization of, separa of, a, of separation legal proceedings brought by Menzies in relation to the tender award to Paragon currently uh, pending before another judge. After arguments on 4 July 2023, the High Court, Bear Justice Wintele, postponed the case to 4 August 2023 for judgment. On 4 August 2023, the judgment was not ready and the case was postponed to 8 August 2023 for delivery of that particular judgment. It turned out that on 4 August 2023, Menzies again instituted an, after, an interlocutory application in order to introduce what he called was new evidence before the judgment is delivered on 8 August 2023. Again, this appears to have been a tactic to prolong Menzies' unlawful stay at the airport. This new application by Menzies, one of many applications in courts, was heard on the evening of 7 August 2023, and judgment therein was also postponed to 8 August 2023. On 8 August 2023, the High Court dismissed with costs Menzies' late, latest application to introduce new evidence before the main judgment was delivered. In the main application brought by Menzies on 12 June 2023, the court yesterday made the following order, and I quote, it is declared that the notice which the Namibia Airports Company on 9 June 2023 gave to Menzies Aviation 
to cease rendering of the ground handling services and advocate the Osiakuta for International Airport was not reasonable and is thus invalid. The notice of 9 June 2023 referred to in the paragraph above is set aside. The prayer to, uh, to stay the execution of this court's order issued under case HC stroke MD stroke CID stroke MOT stroke GEN stroke 2022 stroke 00233. Pending the outcome of the review application under case or under the previous case that I have mentioned is dismissed. The prayer to stay the execution of this court's order is issued under case HC stroke. MD stroke, CIV stroke, MOT stroke, GN stroke, 2022 stroke, 00233. Pending the determination of Menzies uh, appeal in the Supreme Court from the case of the, sorry, from, from the case of the review application under the same uh, order is dismissed. The prayer is set aside, sorry, the prayer to set aside the certification by the 14th and or 15th oil or 16th respondent of Paragon staff and equipment as fed for purpose to comply with the contract in, entered into Namibia Airports Company Limited and Paragon to provide ground handling services at Hosea Kutako International Airport is dismissed. Each party must, must bear its own cost. The matter is regarded as finalized and removed from the road. That's the end of the book. Paragon hereby therefore informs its customers, the general public and all stakeholders that it has kept a state of readiness since 9 June 2023 and will immediately start with further, further preparation to commence with ground handling services at Jose Akutapo International Airport whenever NAC may ask it to commence. Paragon expects that on the expiration of the 30-day period, NSA may give Nancy's. Nancy's will be obligated to leave the airport and hand over operations to Paragon. This therefore means that Nancy's is on its way out from Osea Kutaku International Airport as it has again lost its application to stay, to stay the order made by the High Court per Justice Subia on 29 June 2022. Further information on Paragon's preparation and takeover will be communicated to the public in due course. On this basis, we thank all our customers, friends, and other stakeholders who patiently waited for court to pronounce itself on this long-standing issue. Paragon, while not pleased with the delay occasioned by the unlawful refusal of Menzies to leave the airport as found by the Supreme Court, is at least happy that it has now made clear that Messis will have to leave the airport within the period of time ordered by the High Court. Finally, Paragon is profound, profoundly concerned by the arrogant attitude and dilatory tactic, dilatory tactics employed by, by Messis over the past 12 months or so. Yesterday, after the High Court judgment in which Messis lost his application to stay its eviction from the airport, Menzies issued a public statement in which, in which it amongst others stated that, and I quote, Menzies will therefore continue to provide ground handling services at Hosea Kutako International Airport unless otherwise informed by Menzies and not any other third party. It is clear from the, uh, and that's the end of the quote, sorry. It is clear from the above statement that in a manner that is consistent with Menzies' unlawful refusal to leave, to leave the airport as directed by the High Court on 29 June 2022 and as confirmed by the Namibian Supreme Court on 9 June 2023, Menzies is determined to continue delaying its vacation of the airport at all costs. Paragon will henceforth no longer tolerate any delay tactics and will as a fact take over operations at the expiration of that, of that period, that, that the NEC may give Menzies to leave the airport. Millions of Namibia dollars have been lost by Paragon 
as a direct result of Messi's refusal to vacate airport, the airport despite court orders. Paragon's right to claim damage, damages in future as res is reserved, and its legal uh, practitioners will guide Paragon in this regard. And this is issued by Paragon Management, and I thank you. Uh, as I stated earlier, I will now give an opportunity to Mr. Namanje to give any legal clarifications that might occur. Mr. Namanje. Yes, thanks everybody. I just want to clarify the fact that uh, uh, my clients are not discussing there is a matter that is still pending before Judge Rako. That is a review matter. This press conference is not about that matter. The press conference called by my client is in regard to the finalized matter before Justice Waiter. Another matter that was before Justice Siper is also finalized. And the Supreme Court matter, which is also finalized. Those three cases. So we are not going to comment on the matter that is still in court, that is the review by Nancy. Um, further, I want to uh, say something about the judgment of yesterday. The judgment of yesterday did a number of things. The first one is that it, as Nazan just uh, indicated, set aside the notice of four days that was given to Menzi by NAC. The judge, in his judgment, also found and determined that the reasonable period that could be given to uh, Menzi by NAC is 30 days. Those who have the judgment can look at the judgment. There is a finding by the judge in one of the paragraphs to that effect. Of course, Menzi, the issue of the notice is an issue between NAC and Menzi, and the Paragon is not involved. Uh, that will mean that uh, at minimum, um, Menzi would have to be given a, a notice, either 30 days, I don't know whether it's more than 30 days or 30 days, but what is clear, the judge has found that 30 days would be reasonable. So my, when my clients are saying that they are prepared to commence, we will be, we do not know whether in the meantime the notice has been given to Menzi or it will be given today, tomorrow, or next week, but we expect because of the delay caused by all these litigations, we expect that notice to go out as soon as possible, otherwise our client will be suffering continuous damages and losses because of all this um, unlawful refusal of the party to leave the airport. Um, another issue that uh, we also need to highlight is that for too long um, we have been trying to play safe, not to appear to be obstructive, Notwithstanding the fact that uh, Paragon has been losing millions and millions to maintain its preparedness to take over. Uh, but I think time has come where my client is no more going to tolerate any other delaying tactics on the preparation, whatever that period will be. Once NAC have given the notice and Paragon has been informed what period that is, Paragon will as a fact prepare in accordance with that notice and will use all the available remedies and resources to ensure that at the expiration of that period, Paragon as a fact will be providing services at that airport. So we will not tolerate the situation where a party in an independent Namibia um, would uh, allocate to itself a right to ignore court order, including a court order confirmed by the Supreme Court. 
The Supreme Court, uh, by the way, um, yesterday, we some people appeared to think that Supreme Court order had been resigned or ju justice their order had been resigned. There is no, re there was never a rescission of those orders. Those orders are operative. The Supreme Court stands and Paragon is a party that benefit from the terms of those orders will ensure that once that notice, whenever it will go out to pens, as it expires, Paragon will use its right as a successful bidder to commence operation and it has a backup of those court orders. And um, um, in Namibia being a country of rule of law, we will ensure that all those who are there, who are obligated to keep law and order in Namibia ensure that the process of law, court orders are no more frustrated by any party, no matter how strong that party is financial or commercial. And uh, it can be correct that uh, a party can use its commercial tiers to commit an illegality continuously for a period of more than 12 months. At the expense of another party, a party that is uh, homegrown, a party owned by formerly disadvantaged Namibia, and uh, the Public Procurement Act has one of its objects uh, is that to um, grow capacity, procurement capacity in Namibia. So it is actually subversive of the objectives of the public procurement if Namibians are being kept away through um, conduct such as refusal to comply with the court order. The Supreme Court has specifically found that a party that is an unlawful invader of the airport is actually meant. And the Supreme Court has also expressly indicated that the airport belongs to Namibia Airport Company, and it's Namibia Airport that company that decides who must provide services. And um, so, um, to have a situation where yesterday a statement comes out that don't listen to any other party but to us, it's a, it, so that statement um, is particularly what caused my clients to call for this press conference. Um, so we, we, we will be doing everything within the law. We will not resort to tactics and ways that are not in conformity with the requirement of the law. But this time around, my client will not, will not hesitate to protect its rights in whatever way it, it could. So um, I think that clarifies um, the, our position. And uh, uh, let it be clear, we are not here to discuss the pending judgment. A lot of um, allegations have been thrown a lot, uh, around to everybody, even mainly in some cases suggesting dishonesty on part of our client. Uh, our, our client right remain reserved and we will take all such action as may be um, available to our client to protect his right. So um, that's it. Um, we commented on the matters that are finalized. We never commented on the matter that is pending. Uh, that fight is a fight for another day and uh, we will be ready to fight. This thing of uh, uh, making people to believe that uh, it's this party that will be winning a review uh, as if a decision has already been taken. And it's a party that has been losing all around about five cases. Um, so this audacity and arrogance must die. This is a country uh, with the executive, with the legislature, with the judiciary. And uh, those are the people that are running this country, and not the company uh, relying on 
its commercial and financial muscles to drop statement here and there and uh, to make to give a picture as if it is in charge of this country. To tell people that don't listen to any other person when you get somebody airport unlawfully. It's an insult. Uh, so that I think a lot has been said about our state of readiness and I think uh, this one can elaborate on how we can be what we are doing. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll give you now the opportunity to, to ask any questions if you can. And if you're asking a question, please just state your name and which publication or which media house you want to see. Um, it's it's the Lambda Portal. I mean, you said a question about the readiness. Because uh, the readiness is also important. A lot of people that are seeking out at home, um, they have also been in touch with us. And I said, now they are ready, now they can't move, and so on. I just want to know what will happen after the 30th grade if nothing happens? What's going to happen to these people? The people that uh, you have prepared to take over the airport? You mean? The ground you can stop. With those people, you mean the employees? Yes, the employees. And before that, uh, this one, I think uh, we don't want to be misunderstood. We refer to a period of 30 days only in the context that that is what the judge found in the judgment. Mm -hmm. We do not, we are not privy to the communication between Menzi and the NAC from, yeah, from yesterday, what period uh, mm -hmm. they were given. We need to be informed, is it 30 days, 31 days, we don't know. But what is clear, the judge said 30 days is reasonable. So, so, so we never suggested that it would be 30 days, but we say the judge found 30 days is a reasonable period. So it's up to those by the NEC to give a notice, but the minimum and the reasonable period is 30 days. If it is 30 days, Menzi must be. If it is 31 days, Menzi must be. And it must be this time around. But in the meantime, what happens to the employees? Because it's another delay, because they've been waiting for 12 months for this employment. Yeah, just see if I get your question correctly. You are saying who the event menses does not leave after that after period, the, whatever yes, that is. Whatever that period is. You no, know, that's not an option because they will not be at the airport. Because if they continue to be at the airport after such notice, whatever it may be, that would make a mockery of, uh, of, of the law. I think that we may as well open the, the gates of the jails so that all those people who are held there for crimes can be released, including the uh, Koleki and Sanish and they, they must all be released because what's the point? Uh, I mean, we have five uh, judgments, uh, two Supreme Court and, and three High Court. What more do you want? It's just not a, it's, it's an answer. It won't happen. They will go. Yeah. So does it mean by fire by force we are going to enter that building and just start working? There will be no fire, no force. <laughs> Sanity <laughs> will prevail. This is our land. Uh, uh, look, <coughs> there are laws in this country. And, and I'm sure those colleagues are, are they must have realized now that they've pushed the envelope far enough and uh, it's over. But, but you see, the, the media, I think, also have a, a role to play in such kind of matter. Many times, uh, the media speaks about the importance of rule of law, because without that, uh, you have no guarantee on things going as they should in a democratic country. Now, we have been in court including on Monday, we were in court at uh, past eight, I think after nine. It's the second time we are made to be in court and almost until wee hours of the morning because of a party. But in this country, um, the judiciary is doing a lot to make justice accessible to everybody, and the executive is to try its best to fund the judiciary. But I can tell you, there are many people that are yearning for their cases to be heard Every, every day, almost every time, because of circumstances. But those people, because of 
Uh, either um, there are no court facility in their areas, there is no money to find lawyer, and in some cases their circumstances are not considered to be important. You have a party that is making us drink up to court almost every day. So um, I think when Desmond says that we will be there, is there because I think there must be finality to this. It can be a, a circle of going to court every day. Uh, Paragon has already lost more than 12 months of its tender. It is for five years. It has lost, and it's documented in judgments of court. It has lost millions. People are employed by Paragon to start working. They have been waiting. So when we say that we are determined, we all what Paragon wants is a notice. We, we do not know the public will get that notice. We want to hear about it today, tomorrow. I don't know when the NAC is going to um, express itself. But once it does, we'll make sure that uh, <coughs> these acts of delays will not continue in our land. Okay, quick, just quickly, we are calling out about the government. Look, I am beginning to see a, an attitude I don't like in terms of this whole thing. And uh, is this thing on fire? And that's actually the real problem. Entitlement, uh, uh, this exceptionalism and, and privilege. Like if it's me, then everything else must stop. People must listen and they can be allowed to say irresponsible things of people being corrupt and the other without approving it. Because that our past has organized that in such a way that when specific people speak about specific things, we must just accept them to be true, almost as though you are being gaslighted. And, and that's the real problem. Because imagine how many Namibians who are trying their opportunity in terms of our business are out there who cannot litigate as far as we did and they lose this opportunity. So for me, and I'm not inviting anybody to, to be a part of this fight. I, we are quite capable of doing this on ourselves, but it's not only for us. It's also for the next guy who will be put in this situation and who may not have the money and otherwise to fight or even the competency to do so. So this is when Nuyoma then says second phase, they didn't actually explain to us nicely what do they mean in second phase. We are now understanding it. This is the real second hand, I mean, second phase uh, of the struggle. And we are ready for it. Um, my name is Emil Khamrosik. Um, thank you for the opportunity. I, I, I plead um, ignorance, Mr. Namanji, to be a senator, because I've not been following the court case. It's very new to me. I need to go and do a lot of reading to really understand where it started. So maybe if you could just help to assist me, what are the advancements by Menzies, the, the, the refusal? Maybe if you could sum it up for me. I will definitely go and read. What are their arguments? Why don't you want to read? Yeah. Yeah, go, ask the, uh, uh, go ask the why the Supreme Court, read the Supreme Court judgment. The Supreme Court judgment is clear. In fact, in one of the paragraphs in the Supreme Court judgment, the, the court suggested they, that they fabricated, they appeared to have been intending on fabricating a defense why they should be at the airport beyond the 30th of June 2022. <coughs> These are not Caesar's words in the Supreme Court uh, judgment. The Supreme Court statement came out very hard. Meant Everybody can go and read. So I, I don't want to be to mistake what the Supreme Court has said. Just go there. The arguments are summarized. You can also read the High Court judgment by Justice there. And uh, by the way, remember, in terms of the Public Procurement Act, if you want a tender to be state and award to be state, then at that time, section 52, subsection 9 of the Public Procurement Act gave a party like Benz a right to go to court and ask for an award to be suspended pending these things. 
Remember the award, uh, the notice to award to Paragon went out in December 2021. So Menzi, if he so wished, could have gone to court to get a suspension order already in December 2021 or in January 2022, February and so forth. It did go to the internal review, it lost. When it lost, then it only brought a review application somewhere in April 2022. And it had been losing cases all over. So, um, so their arguments are documented in judgment where you know, it, it came out bleeding all over. So, but the, the fact of the matter, we can continue sweating around every all day because of one case in this country. So we have done a lot and certainty, legal certainty and finality must be reached. I think that this should be enough. We don't want to say much. Yes. Hmm? Because um, I know last time uh, a, a lot of companies actually gave up notice to their clients that they are putting them in trouble for cargo and maybe or other community as well. So uh, uh, what is the preparation around that? Yeah, look, the, the issue you must be, especially when you say the issue of cargo, um, because there, there is nothing wrong with the cargo. Cargo will come and leave Namibia. What you require is uh, things for dangerous goods. You require dangerous goods safety from civil aviation. Those are in place. They are a display that are premises that we receive our customers in that regard. Uh, for other forms of cargo, general cargo, the regulated agent uh, certification which you get from Namibia Civil Aviation. Uh, proud you saw Paragon is the only company in this entire Namibia with that certification. You can go call, call civil aviation after this to satisfy yourself in that regard. All those certifications are ready. So, cargo is we are, we are, we are assessed by all the customer airlines that, um, that, that, that takes cargo and brings cargo here. So, but it is, remains the the um, prerogative of the customer airline to do as it pleases in terms of uh, how it wants to conduct itself in terms of business. Like you would have seen even from that, what you call uh, embargo the last time, it's a social media announcement sent to the carrier's clients and not even to the country. So, but we have the capacity and capability assessed by the relevant authorities with the landing and the competencies to handle cargo. Um, like I said, we are regulated, so if you go better in understanding what is regulated cargo, you, you appreciate my statement. We are the only one in this country so far. Uh, Mr. Munyal, I think I just have a uh, to what my colleagues said, open up from the sun. Um, I, I read um, some. I read um, um, arguments um, when when this thing broke up. And one of the things they mentioned was they they they, 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 they spoke about Qatar, and um, I think Eric was also mentioned. Of the, or there was a South African company that was mentioned, and they said that Namibia's fishing uh, Qatar would pull out, and um, the there were the, the, the fishing stocks or the fishing exports out to Europe and so on would be in jeopardy. Um, what, have, what is being done to, to, to enable those fears? Okay. Let, let me just pull you a little bit. Uh, and I want you to go into your research because the media you also are listed sometimes. And I play in the fishing industry as well. Uh, yeah. I also lazy in the fishing industry. I also lazy in the fishing industry. No, no, no. <laughs> so if you go, you will find that. Uh, more than I don't know how many times the fishing industry has suffered that very fate because the current operator was not capable. And it can be because of myriad of reasons. And those you can find 
If you go to Namra, if you go to airport company, they will tell you that's not my space. Now, in our case, I just told you that we are capable, we are audited by these airlines to assess whether we have the capabilities to provide that service to them. No airline, including those that you have mentioned, has failed us. And I'm speaking to you open, I'm sure where they are, there is a link they can hear me. They have not failed us in terms of determining our capacity. So it's a difficult question to answer from the point of view of what the next person will do. But as we speak, our competency is qualified by those elements to carry the account. But I think I think the press conference is limited to the issue of yesterday. I think we must not go on on that. Some of the issues may become issues in the pending matter. I think we are here to address what happened yesterday and that paragon at the expiration of whatever period NAC may give will have to be at that airport, come what it may. 